Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to go over more of this cloud home, smart home, Wi-Fi connected nonsense that we are living in in our modern dystopia, where you cannot have a product that simply functions and works. It must connect to the internet. It must have Wi-Fi. It must not only have Wi-Fi, but it must connect to somebody else's computer, which is a serious problem for many reasons. This is a $400 baby monitor that is 10 times your cost to your normal baby monitor, that they made a subscription because they realized they needed more money. They changed the terms of the sale, and you had to accept it because in order to use the device, it had to connect to the manufacturer's servers. General Motors decided that they wanted to make more money, so they utilized the computers and the internet connections that were put into your car without your consent to collect data on your driving activities and then sell that information to companies like LexisNexis that then gave that data away to insurance companies who would then hike your rates if the borderline personality disorder AI in the car thought you made a sharp turn when you didn't because we all know that these AIs are just so, so reliable based on the YouTube channels that they delete randomly when they talk about TCP IP and the OSI model. And as some people who know me know, there is nothing I disdain more than when people collect data without my consent. Or cameras that just start to charge you monthly for something that used to be free. You see, the problem with many of these cloud-connected smart devices is that they need to connect to the manufacturer's servers, aka somebody else's computer, aka the computer of somebody that has an incentive structure to charge you more money for the same thing that you purchased once they realize they need more money and they will not function properly without connecting to the manufacturer's servers, which is a serious problem. Many people will say, well, this is done because the cloud is so much more secure. You don't want to trust just yourself to set up these types of systems. That could be dangerous. There could be security implications, like um, when even a $3 trillion company can't figure out how to get the leak key right. So today we're going to be discussing propane uh, tankless water heaters. You may wonder, why the is a tankless water heater connecting to the internet. What is the point? Well, I have a tankless water heater that runs off of propane in my home. If you simply had a boiler in your basement like I did when I was a kid, when you would ask for hot water, it would simply produce hot water. It was on all the time. The way a tankless water heater works is it does not store any water. It will simply have some sort of propane burner inside of it. You can see it. It lights up like crazy anytime you turn on the hot water, and it instantly starts boiling the water that is going through it so that you have hot water at your faucet or at your shower. However, since this only turns turns on when you ask for it, that means that the water that was in the pipe is going to be cold. So in my bathroom upstairs that's right next to the tankless water heater, I just turn the knob and instantly I get hot water. But downstairs where I have my shower, I may have to wait a minute in order to have hot water because the water in the pipe is cold. There are features like recirculation that allow that water, if you ask it to, to be made warm so that you're not wasting water coming out of your shower because you don't want to take a cold shower when it's 17 degrees outside, which is understandable. And what they did here is they decided to make this a feature that uh, works over, over Wi-Fi. So not only do you have to connect your, your water heater to the internet, but after connecting your water heater to the internet, you have to connect it to the manufacturer servers. You cannot simply have it locally controlled by your own server. You can't have it controlled locally by the app on your phone without having to speak to the manufacturer servers. Now, why is this a problem? This is a problem for two reasons. A, there is absolutely no reason that I should have to connect to a server 1,000 miles away to control my own tankless water heater. I bought it. It is in my house. The business of my hands wanting hot water and the water heater that I paid for creating that hot water really does not have to leave my house. Uh, the second problem is that when manufacturers do this, again, whether we're talking about a $3 trillion company that doesn't know what the leaky means, or we're talking about a tankless water heater company, they implement it in a very insecure way, which is what this gentleman, Ars Technica, went over. So the way that this worked is uh, essentially if I know your email address, I can actually control your tankless water heater. I'm not kidding. There is an API key here, and it seems to be the same API key for every individual that is using this piece of crap. Reading directly from the article, it appears this is an unauthenticated endpoint, and absolutely anyone on the internet can read all the information about me and my water heater, and also set new temperatures for me at any time, without needing to know my password. Just the API key, which is in the code base, and is the same for anyone. Uh, to, so to be clear here, let's say that I dislike you, and let's say that I know your email, and let's say that I know you're on vacation. Three things that can be true of me, because sometimes I record when I'm out on vacation. My email address is public, because I've said Lewis at RossmanGroup.com is how to contact me. Uh, what you could do here is you could use this application. You could essentially start utilizing my water heater and punk me to the point that when I come back from vacation, I have no propane. Are you tired of this Wi-Fi connected shit yet? You see, I don't have this problem in my home because my water heater runs on propane, not Wi-Fi. The way it's supposed to be.
I am sick and tired of living in a world where everybody thinks everything needs to connect to the internet all the time. This does not have to connect to the internet. There is absolutely no reason for any data packet, any piece of information to ever leave my home when I am dealing with a water heater. This is not like something where I even want to turn an air conditioner on, where I may want to do this on my drive home before I get home. This is a tankless water heater that I'm going to use when I decide to take a shower. I don't need to be able to control this on my phone from Dubai or Germany or England. I need to control it when I am in my house. There is no reason for it to connect to the internet. There is no reason for it to connect to the manufacturer servers. There is no reason for this to leave my home. Now, in this video, I would like to promote a different piece of software that's open source that I suggest all of you use if you ever want to get into this cloud connected stuff. And that is called Home Assistant. Home Assistant is a suite of open source software as well as open source integrations that all essentially is built by people that decide to try and reverse engineer the manufacturer's API and figure out how to allow you to control your device directly without having to connect to the manufacturer's servers whenever possible. And somebody, after people were asking about this, actually created, created a Renai integration for Home Assistant. I'm actually in the process of doing cloud thermostats in my home because I want to be able to turn on my thermostat before I go home. I don't like the fact that I can only do it by schedule because my schedule is very erratic. And most of these devices require that I connect to the manufacturer's servers, which to me is fundamentally unacceptable. I don't know if these devices have microphones in them. Some of them are voice activated. God forbid. There is no way in hell I want a microphone connecting to the internet to a manufacturer's server who, for all I know, doesn't use anything other than the default API key and not a password. And I don't feel like them deciding that they're going to charge me once a month or once a year or once a day or every time I use it because their stock went down that day, which is why I decided to get a Venstar, which does not require that I connect to the internet. I can have this connect directly to my home assistant server that I have at home and adjust the temperature. Further, I don't even have to allow these things online. I can make PFSense rules so that my home assistant thing is not online and so that the Venstar thermostat is not online and then I can VPN into my home system and change the temperature of my home without any of these devices ever connecting to the internet. That is the beauty of open source. Cloud is not the problem. Smart homes are not the problem. The culture that we have is the problem. The culture we accept manufacturers owning not just our hardware, not just our software, not just our data, but at some point, ourselves. And I like to push back against this. Do not buy a water heater that has to connect to the internet because it is not beyond consideration that your neighbor that dislikes you could essentially punk you and empty your propane tank while you're on vacation. I used to live in Round Rock before I moved here, which is an absolutely horrific place ridden with HOAs everywhere where once a week I would have somebody emailing me or texting me pictures of my fucking grass blades that were two millimeters higher than they were supposed to. And I genuinely despise these people and present Essentially everybody associated with all these HOAs. I was renting because I needed to find a place quickly, which is the only reason that I ever lived in one of those pieces of shit. And uh, essentially, these people knew my email, they knew my phone number. And if they knew that I was using this crap because they saw it or they saw a box outside my house when I was disposing of it, somebody that really dislikes me, somebody could technically uh, empty my propane tank or give me a $500 gas bill simply by knowing my email. That's the world that you're going to live in if you have every single one of your home devices connect to Wi-Fi, allow them on the internet, and allow them to connect to the manufacturer's servers. It's time you push back against this, and I hope that the people on this channel are committed to letting everybody in their life know and understand why this is the case. Your average person has absolutely no idea how insecure these systems are. They have absolutely no idea how the manufacturers are going to exploit them down the line because they don't know that this is an issue. Most people that I meet that own General Motors vehicles or General Motors trucks have absolutely no idea that General Motors has made it a standard policy to sell your data to insurance companies so that they have an excuse to raise your rates. But they should know because if they did know, they would stop purchasing these products because if they did know, they would push back against it. And we need more people to push back against it or else this is going to become the norm. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. By the way, check it out. Got one of those watches that you can actually see in the back that it ticks. So cool. This is a gift I got from a person in my life that's very important to me. And uh, look at this. You think this connects to Wi-Fi? The really cool thing about this is that that thing that you see moving in the back is actually going to charge the watch so that it doesn't have to be wound all the time, but rather, essentially, if you're moving your arm enough, you can essentially use this for the rest of your life and never have to wind it, which is pretty cool. The person who got this for me, uh, she knows that I absolutely despise all these smart devices nowadays and thought that she would uh, replace the, my uh, Garmin fitness watch with one of these, which is just absolutely cool. So 
Yeah, very nice gift. Thank you. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.